Part 2. In this video lesson, you will find out the main muscles of the human head, neck, and shoulders. We begin with the muscles of the human head. The muscle of the forehead extends from the hairline to the brow ridge. This muscle is actually the frontal portion of a much bigger muscle that spans from the brow ridge to the back edge of the skull. Another portion of this muscle is located on the back of the head. Between these two portions, there is a wide, flat tendon that covers the entire top part of the skull. This forehead muscle can produce different expressions on a face. Contraction of both left and right portions of this muscle elevates the eyebrows, which gives an impression of surprise or disbelief. When only one side is contracted, one eyebrow is lifted. This arching of the eyebrow expresses bemusement or distrust. In fact, not every person can produce such action of the forehead muscle. This muscle can also lift upward the inner corners of the eyebrows, making an expression of sadness or grief. The side walls of the skull are covered by a flat, fan-shaped muscle, which inserts into the process of the lower jawbone. This muscle closes the jaw and retracts it. There is another muscle that is mainly responsible for closing the jaw. It is located on both sides of the lower jawbone. This muscle is easy to spot when a person clenches the teeth or chews something hard. It can indicate emotional tension. There are three portions around the air channel of the muscle, which is actually obsolete as humans lost the ability to move their ears in the direction of sound. I actually met one guy in school who was able to move his ears slightly. It was just a funny trick. It had no practical purpose. Around the eyeball, there is a disc-shaped muscle. It has two parts, the thicker part that goes around the eye and the slimmer one, which is located inside the eyelids. The thicker fibers of the circular eye muscle squeeze the eye shut. This muscle is in action when someone squints or winks. The slender and more delicate portions of the eyelid gently close the eyelids when blinking. There is another important muscle of the human head that has a circular shape. This is the muscle of the mouth. This muscle closes the lips, pulling them together. The trumpeter's muscle goes horizontally sideways from the corner of the mouth. This muscle pulls the angle of the mouth straight back, compressing the cheeks and lips. It is used when a person is blowing a trumpet. Thus, the use of its common name. There are four muscles on either side of the face that begin from the cheekbone and insert into the upper part of the mouth muscle. The muscle, which is the closest to the nose, elevates the wings of the nose and pulls upward the middle portion of the upper lip. Three other muscles are also pulling the upper lip upward as well as stretching it out. Working separately and together, they can produce a wide array of emotions from disgust to smiles. On either side of the nose, there are the nose muscles that are quite difficult to detect. They compress the nostrils and pull the nose slightly downward, which slightly enlarges the nostrils. Near the root of the nose, there are a couple of muscles that depress the inner ends of the eyebrows, producing horizontal wrinkles near the root of the nose. These muscles display expressions of annoyance, anger, or intense concentration. Here is the muscle that pulls the corners of the mouth downward. It participates in the expressions of sadness or disapproval. 
Next to this muscle, there is another muscle that begins at the lower jaw and inserts into the lower lip. When contracted, it pulls the lower lip downward. It is an important muscle as it participates in speech. Underneath the lower jaw, there are a couple of muscles that connect the lower jaw, the tongue bone, and the base of the skull. These muscles help open the lower jaw as well as elevate the tongue bone when swallowing and speaking. Here is the Adam's apple, cartilage, and the windpipe. This structure is also known as the voice box. Here is the top portion of the back muscle, which, among other bones, also inserts into the base of the skull. The muscle of the neck has two heads. One begins from the top edge of the breastbone, and another from the inner part of the collarbone. These two portions insert into the bony process and base of the skull, behind the air channel. Working together, these neck muscles bend the head in different positions, forward, backward, and sideways, as well as rotating it from left to right. The trapezium muscle covers the rear side of the neck, this diamond-shaped muscle begins from the base of the skull and vertebrae of the spine and inserts into the outer part of the collarbones and spines of the shoulder blades. The front of the neck is covered by thin, flat muscle that is located between the collarbones and the lower jaw. There is a muscle that connects the ribs between each other. On the side of the torso, there is the muscle that has eight or nine digitations that start from the side parts of the rib and insert into the inner border of the shoulder blade. The main function of this muscle is to move the shoulder blade. Here is the important muscle of the upper arm, called the biceps brachii. As indicated by its name, it has two heads that begin from the shoulder blade. The tendon of one head goes along the groove on the upper arm bone. This muscle occupies the entire front portion of the upper arm. Its main action is to flex the forearm. The back portion of the upper arm is occupied by the triceps brachii, which extends the forearm. Here is the chest muscle. It has three portions. The top portion begins from the inner half of the collarbone and travels diagonally downward. The middle portion begins from the breastbone and travels horizontally sideways. And the third lower portion begins from the sixth and seventh ribs and travels diagonally upward.
These three portions insert into the upper part of the upper arm bone. Fibers of this muscle overlap each other near the place of insertion. The chest muscle moves the upper arm bone. It participates in the actions of adduction, flexion, and medial rotation. This is the important muscle of the shoulder girdle. It is called the deltoid. It has a triangular shape. This muscle consists of three parts, the frontal portion, the side portion, and the back portion. It begins in front of the outer half of the collarbone. The side portion begins from the outer edge of the shoulder blade, and the back portion begins from the shoulder blade spine. The deltoid overlaps the chest muscle and inserts approximately in the middle of the upper arm bone. It assists in the actions of raising the arm horizontally, which is abduction, and raising the arm out in front of the body, which is flexion. It also contributes to the action of moving the arm back behind the torso, which is extension. This concludes the review of the main muscles of the head, neck, shoulders, and upper torso. In the next video lesson, I will show you how to use this anatomy knowledge for drawing a realistic portrait.